We've all been there, hustling our way through the week to make sure everyone's needs have been met, meals, sports schedules, rides, work calls, school, and more. Working hard to provide and often feeling a lot of pressure to do it well. So what truth do we anchor ourselves to when stress and the mental capacity it requires threaten to take us out? I'm so glad you asked. I'm Eve Stipes, and this is the Grace Lace Podcast. Today, my co-host, Ruth Jo Simons, and I are unpacking a lifeline truth. God knows what you need. So settle in and join us for today's conversation. Okay, Eve, so would you categorize yourself as a warrior? Is that something you actually struggle with? Mm, yeah, <laughs> I think we probably all do. Who doesn't, do. right? Right, right, yeah. But and I think it also looks situation. different for everybody. I mean, yeah. we all look different in the way we worry about things. But okay, what's what's on your worry list? What do you tend to be yeah. burdened by? I think mine tends to be finances or just like, how are we going to make it? What are we going to do? How are we going to pay off that medical debt? <laughs> like, how does this all fit mm-hmm. together in our life? And praise the Lord, he has paired me with a husband who does not struggle in that same way. Cody, like, literally never worries about money, which Hmm. I can't understand in my brain, but I'm really grateful for. Um, So yeah, I wouldn't say overall, I worry a lot, but that is one area where if I'm going to worry, that's probably what it's going to be. You know, and I I tend to want to think like deeply about something, you know, surprise, surprise, but I'm always kind of like, what is the root thing that's going on here? Because it's not like either of us are concerned about having the next meal on the table. Nobody is struggling with, you know, our, we don't have a layoff in our home. We don't have somebody without a job. Those are things that sometimes stir up like actual fear and concern. Like, oh my goodness, we, we don't have the funds to buy groceries or, Mm -hmm. um, you know, my husband just lost his job. Those are some, sometimes people are really going through those things, but when we're worried and we're not going through those things, I sometimes wonder if at the root, it's that I want not even a certain kind of lifestyle. I just want to feel secure. I want to mm-hmm. feel like I don't need to be concerned at all. Yeah, It's all going to be okay. In fact, I can just go take you know, long nap and not have a care <laughs> in the world. So it's ease. I mean, if I'm, yeah. if I'm naming maybe the the idol or mm. the thing that I want more than anything, it's that I want to feel secure, at ease and comfortable. And maybe yeah. because I, I have my version of worrying about finances or worrying about, yeah. um, you know, getting all my needs met, whether through the business or in my marriage or my family or mm-hmm. um, professionally, all those things. And at the root of it, it's like, the core worry and the core lie is that I have to provide for myself and I won't ever feel secure unless I acquire and stock up and store up (laughs) and make sure that everything I need or want, I got at my fingertips, which sounds so silly, right? Yeah. It's almost like we're pushing against any sort of limitation too, right? Because I don't want to have to make do quote unquote with X, Y, or Z. I want to feel like the potential is limitless or like I can just go out and spend however much money I wanted to and not have to think about it. Like we, we want yeah. no limits. We want the security that comes along with that feeling or with the idea of that feeling. And what we're talking about is like the burden of feeling like we need to provide for physical needs. Yeah. I mean, there's, we're, we're getting to all those different topics through this season and sometimes it is emotional. Sometimes it's mental. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's the burden of like, carrying the weight of somebody else's suffering. There's all of that. But today's episode is really about when we think that, you know, like the Matthew 6 passage, and we should just read that in a sec here. But when we think about how, you know, Jesus specifically talks about why, you know, why we shouldn't worry about what we will wear and Mm. what we will eat and, and all the things that consume us, because it's that physical, like, how do I make myself happy, secure, Mm -hmm. and how do I make myself feel sheltered Mm -hmm. by just providing for myself? Really? That's really what Jesus was getting Material needs. Yeah. Read for us that passage. Okay. This is Matthew 6. I'm going to read 25 to 33. So it's a little bit longer, but hang in there because you got to hear the whole context. So this is Jesus speaking and he says, therefore, I tell you, 
Oh man, just reading it. (laughs) Do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body or what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them all, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Oh man, is that not like (laughs) the most (laughs) mic drop passage ever? Like, I just don't know what to say because I'm glad you read that whole section Yeah, because it's Jesus just putting into perspective every thing that we kind of think we're hiding from him like, Oh yeah, I'm not really worried about that, but <laughs> really it's, it's the putting the treasure and thinking that it's the seeking first the kingdom of earth and all the things that we feel like we need to be happy when yeah, Jesus is so specific and saying, seek first the kingdom of God. And well, you know, what's, what's interesting too, when I just reading it now, What came to mind is, gosh, how much time and energy and mental capacity do I spend on all of the things that were just listed? Like, what are we eating tonight? And what am I going to wear for this? Or what are my kids wearing to this particular activity? And like just those two things alone, it takes up a lot of mental energy, a lot of space. And yes, we have to figure them out. But we spend a lot more time on it probably than we should. Or just the fact that those are the things that we feel burdened by, right? Yeah. The worry is that it's a burden when we yeah. aren't just gratefully and happily saying, I will steward what mm-hmm. resources I have to make dinner for my family. It's the burden, some sense of, is this really you know, what we have? Yeah. How are we going to make it more? why can't we do better? You know, those are the thoughts that kind of consume us and cause us to feel exhausted or weighed down. Yeah. And we called this episode, he knows what you need. And that I think is one of my favorite parts of Mm -hmm. that passage that I just read where it gets to the bottom and says, the Gentiles seek all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them all. So like this verse isn't saying, don't worry about it at all. No big deal. You don't actually need this stuff. No, your Heavenly Father knows exactly what you need when it comes to every single thing in this list. And you know, something I've been mulling over in my behind the scenes, off the screen personal life is how much um, theology I might know in my brain, but how much more I need to lean into the love and the care of my Father. Mm -hmm. Because when I am burdened, when I am anxious, yeah. When I think that I have to provide for myself, usually it's some negotiation process of being like, okay, Lord, I mean, I know you do these things, but I've got to, I've got to do my part and I've got to really make sure that no balls are dropped here. Oh, yeah. wait, wait, you got, you hold it all together. Yes, you do. Mm-hmm. But I forget. No, no, no. He doesn't just hold all things together. He doesn't just provide for us. He knows our need. He cares yeah. for us. He actually delights in saying I see you. I'm providing for you. Mm-hmm. Not one moment of your life is out of my care. Yeah. And um, I think, I think maybe one of the most impacting things for me is recognizing that what God wants with Ruth Simons is not my labors and my work and mm-hmm. all my great efforts in doing all the responsible things, but that I actually receive and yeah. that I, choose not to carry this burden of worry because I see how much he delights in providing for me. It's not just saying, oh, I mentally trust that he's providing for me. Right. 
but that it's like I lean in and receive and say, you are a good father that yeah. loves to provide. And um, just as a side note, when you read Matthew 6, the picture of the flowers of the field mm. and the birds in the air. I paint flowers and birds for a reason because they yeah. are, they're delightful. Mm -hmm. They're not sulking. They're not groaning <laughs> and they're not miserable. They are yeah. free and they are just delighting in their purpose mm -hmm. in all their splendor and all their freedom. And when we love to be like that, Hey friends, you know that one beautiful gold necklace I wear? It's called the Seraphim and it's from my friends at Everyday Heirloom. And I want to tell you about them because they have graciously sponsored this season of the podcast. Everyday Heirloom is a fine art jewelry brand that exists to adorn the beloved, creating tangible reminders of God's faithfulness for women, serving them with the inherent truth and beauty of the gospel through wearable art. And that seraphim is straight out of imagery from scripture that helps me remember that God desires my worship and that I am made to know his holiness and to come into his presence. And that's what they do. They do that so well by making every design a handcrafted piece that the husband and wife team that Hannah and Jake are together create in Colorado. They're just on the other side of the mountains from me and they use precious and semi-precious metals and stones and a reverent approach to craft with and create these beautiful pieces in the Everyday Heirloom collection that help us wear beautiful wearable art every day of our lives. So the wearable art collection is available at everydayheirloomco.com and you can use the code RUTH25 for $25 off the order. So follow the brand on Instagram, Everyday Heirloom, for insights and inspiration behind the designs for everyday life, or visit adornthebeloved.com to find out more about their mission, the blog, gift guide, and so much more. Yeah, there is something really simple about receiving his care, like mm -hmm. the lilies of the field or a bird in the sky, something so inconsequential to us, but knowing that God sees them, knows them, provides for them. It's kind of crazy. There's a really great um, quote from Paul David Tripp talking about this passage, and he says, you'll tend to worry when you've attached the vitality of your life to things you don't actually need and can't ever control, or you will tend to worry in the face of legitimate need when you forget your heavenly father and his ever faithful covenant love. Hmm. So it makes me think of what you were just saying of mm -hmm remembering who he is, that he does yeah. delight in us. He does care for us. It's part of his job, <laughs> like the way that he designed it to be. He made us to be totally dependent on him. So when we lean into that and really receive his care, it changes how we feel, <laughs> right? It changes our yeah. actual countenance yeah. um, to be able to move forward. And I love that Paul David Tripp is not saying that there won't be circumstances that will trigger that feeling of worry. He's just yeah. saying how you face those things and how you choose to worry or not worry will be impacted by whether you are keeping your face to and constantly aware of beholding the love of God in your life or yeah. whether you are saying my very livelihood, my very happiness is tied to, you know, all these things that I've got to have control over. Mm -hmm. And, um, so it's not that it's not that there's not going to be stuff that triggers us or mm -hmm. causes that fear or causes that anxiety. Right. It's, it's whether we choose to carry it as a load for us to fix or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or like you said, on the front end, if we're worrying about things that aren't actually needs <laughs> too, like that's a, a, a real temptation to say like, Oh, I need this thing and we feel burdened when we don't have it yeah. and we haven't put it in its right place to begin with. So if we get real practical about this, mm. I mean, my mind immediately goes when I think about the lie of like trying to provide for myself that I'm carrying this huge burden because I have to provide. My mind goes immediately to things like sending my kids to college or mm. um, needing to pay for that new water heater or taking care of, um, you know, payroll. And 
I think of those things because that's the context in my yeah. life. But I can think of lots of other times where I have thought that I needed to have a certain kind of house to be happy, or I needed mm-hmm. a, you know, new things in my wardrobe to feel good about myself, or that my kids needed to be in involved in a certain kind of sport or Mm. have all the right equipment in order to fit in. Whether that's, you know, I'm I'm trying to think of different ways in which this is played out, but I think regardless of what our immediate circumstances are, because we're all different, but um, when we get real practical, I would say every single time, it doesn't matter whether you're concerned or worried about providing for big old, you know, needs that (laughs) you have as a family, or if it's like personal, like, you know, just desires that you want new pillows for your couch, whatever it is. (laughs) I think every time, and Paul David Tripp helps us usher us into this part of the conversation, but I think every time the reality is that it's connected so much to what we think will make us feel happy. Mm -hmm. And so I just keep thinking here at the top of the year, we're at the start of 2024. And what we all want is peace and happiness. I mean, basically (laughs) we want that through our health. You know, we're like, can I, can I be healthier? Can I be more efficient? Can I choose better rhythms in my life? All those things are good things, but we want happiness and we want wellness and we just want to feel this peace that we're where we're needing to go. And so I think on a practical level, it may be really helpful for all of us in our own stories, in our own situations to say, what is it that I think? I have to provide for myself in order to be happy. Is it more money? Is it the certain kind of home? Is it that my kids need to be at a certain school in order for me to Mm -hmm. feel like things are good and I'm happy and we're well. And I think if we just address that first, then it helps us go, should I be worried about that? Because you just asked the question of like, Mm -hmm. you know, is, am I really worrying about needs or am I worrying about things that are just like, these yeah. extra things. Um, and I think Jesus's point in Matthew six always comes back to, I want you to want me, your mm-hmm. savior more yeah. than these things. And so how much more would we be able to focus on letting go and dropping that weight of worry when we go, Oh, okay, let me adjust because I think I'm carrying this load right. of providing for myself, forgetting that he knows what I, he knows what I need. Yeah. starting first and foremost with the kingdom of God and this yeah. love relationship that I've been invited into. I get that. And that's better and more than any physical thing I could attain for myself. Yeah. All of those things for sure. I think each week we've been trying to get to the real nitty gritty practical of, okay, so if we are saying this is the truth that we need to preach to ourselves, that he knows our needs, what does that actually sound like? How do we take that truth Mm -hmm. and rehearse it? What does it look like to practice it? So I will give it a shot. Feel free to chime in. (laughs) Um, So we've been talking through this framework of kind of three steps. The first one being to identify the care Mm -hmm. and naming what it is that's burdening you and then telling your soul what to do, remembering who God is and what he's done. And then embracing gospel hope by articulating how those truths apply to your specific burden. So I will. Are you using Matthew 6? Oh, I should, huh? Well, you could specifically. We could just use Matthew 6 to do it today. Okay. So identifying the care, what is burdening me? This is very, very real life. Um, We have been thinking about getting a little more space, like just a bigger house as our kids grow. And so sometimes I think about it and I feel intense pressure about what that would look like sure. and where it should be and all And you things. go on Zillow and you look yeah. and, look oh my and gosh. you're like, it's out of my price range. Everything I like, everything yes. we like is always out of our price always. range, right? If only I had a couple hundred thousand dollars more. Yeah, two I know. Million it's always more. There. No big deal. <laughs> Just two million more, right? So hopefully I'm not the only person and you are listening <laughs> and nodding along. Um, okay, so that's my care. Name what's burdening me. And then telling my soul what to do. Okay. Hmm. The Lord has been so gracious to provide. When I think about how we even landed in the house that we're in right now, Mm -hmm. only the Lord could have done that. Like there's no other circumstance where he would have, where we would have been able to make this house happen for ourselves. So he has been so faithful in the past. 
he has promised in his word to take care of my needs. Even if we go back to this uh, Matthew 6, he knows what we need. And I can trust that his knowledge of what I need is better and more in depth than my own knowledge. Mm -hmm. And that I have a hard time even distinguishing need and want sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to trust that the Lord would do that and embracing gospel hope. So I will rest. I will not let this burden me and overtake my whole mind and all of my scrolling on Zillow. I can say the Lord knows what I need. I can trust that he's going to provide. And I'm going to not let it take everything from me. I won't let it steal my joy or um, let it be used as a point of comparison. Like really and truly let the Lord provide what we need. I love that. And I need you to just, I, well, I could just play this podcast, but I need you to speak that over me probably regularly when we're, when we're calling each other up, because that's the very word I need to remember. Like, and you have said that to me so many times, (laughs) he knows what we need. Mm. We can trust him all over and over again. I know this is not super spiritual, but I did stop and think as you were saying, I was like, well, but practically does that mean that you stop putting the price range over (laughs) where you've determined oh, I have like because I had to set a, a filter because right? it doesn't help me yeah. because just on a because I there's a there's the spiritual part where you say like I will mentally acknowledge and mm-hmm. emotionally acknowledge that I can trust the Lord but then you also don't need to constantly tempt yourself right to look at the houses that are clearly yes. outside of our range <laughs> and the Lord can do anything so the yeah. fact is you're not missing out on God's best right, right. we're not missing out on God's best if we steward what we have. Mm -hmm. He can bring a house that's out of your price range to you. That's what he wants. If that's what he wants to do, but you don't have to be in a constant sense of like worrying, how do we get to where I want to be when I'm not really there, you know? Yeah. (laughs) Oh man. Yeah. That is very true. (laughs) I just was like, well, I guess there's two sides to this for my own sake too. We're not looking for a house, but we have our versions of that where, you know, how do I say, I'm simultaneously going to preach truth to myself that he knows what I need. Mm -hmm. I can, you know, for me, it might be, Ooh, he knows my, um, my business needs. He knows Mm -hmm. the space our business needs. He knows the employees, our business needs. He knows, um, the, the list a mile long of different things that I've been praying about and seeking the Lord for, but rather than constantly comparing or worrying or thinking, how am I going to strategize this better? Maybe I can start with and preach to myself that exactly what you said. He's always been faithful. Mm. The 10 years of Grace Laced has not just happened because I'm so great. It's because, yeah, <laughs> seriously, it's not happened because <laughs> I've done so many great things. It's because God's been so kind mm-hmm. um, and met me in my willingness to just use what I have. So what if I keep on believing that Mm. God gives me what he intends for me to use right this minute, no more, no less. And I can, I can trust him to provide for the very things that I need to do and accomplish what he has given me to do. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I'm going to pray for all of us, (laughs) for those of you listening, for Ruth and myself, just around this as a way to kind of wrap up the episode today. Lord, we come to you so grateful for this truth and this reminder that you know what we need. Full stop. Um, There are no qualifications. There are no except when. um, You just know what we need, and you are faithful to provide everything we have need of. Lord, if we stopped to just recount the ways that you provided for us individually and in our families and in our jobs and in our churches, the list is endless. Like you really have met every need we have, including our greatest need and being reconciled back to God through Jesus. And Mm so Lord, help us to rehearse those things over and over and help us to do more than pay lip service to them, but to let those realities and those truths sink into our heart and let it change our emotions. Let it change the way we think about what we want and what we need. Help us to rest. Lord, I pray for my sister who might be listening today and 
perhaps the financial burden for her family is very real and very heavy. Lord, would you help her to just hold it out to you with open hands and ask for your provision, trusting that you know what she needs? Lord, would you meet those needs um, in ways that only you can? And would you help us when those needs are met to recognize that they're good gifts from your hand, not just like, wow, that really worked out or what a coincidence, but that we really would praise you for the provision that you have given, just like you said you would. Lord, we love you and we're so grateful to be your children that gets their provision from their good father. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Friend, I hope these Preach to Yourself episodes are encouraging you as much as they are me and Eve. Sometimes the very best thing we can do is to pause to remind ourselves of what is true about God and what He's already done. So our prayer is that today's episode is just the pause you need for whatever it is that's burdening you, financial or otherwise. He knows what you need. So thanks so much for joining us today. We'd be so honored if you shared this episode on social media or took a few minutes to write a short review for the podcast. We love reading your comments and reviews and hearing what resonates with you. And it helps other people know what to expect if they're looking for a new show. So keep it coming.